If you're planning on applying for residency in Mexico in 2022, there are some big changes to the process that you need to know about. And I'm here to tell you. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alex and I moved to Mexico from the US in 2017. I've called Querétaro home ever since. The internet, my inbox, has absolutely been buzzing about changes to the Mexico residency process. Specifically, changes, increases to the financial requirements for proving economic solvency. While that's definitely the most talked about change, it is not the only one. And in today's video, I'll be covering seven must know changes about the Mexico residency process for 2022. I'll also be sharing a unique opportunity to get real time answers to your most pressing questions about the Mexico residency process from an immigration advisor with 15 years of experience. This video is one of several that I have here on my channel about getting your residency in Mexico. And if you are totally new to the process, just getting started in your journey, then this playlist here is something you are definitely going to want to check out. Number one, increases to financial requirements. There are several different ways to qualify for a Mexico residency visa, but by far the most popular, the most common way of qualifying is demonstrating economic solvency. This year, 2022, temporary resident applicants are reporting consulates asking them to show between $2,400 and $2,700 USD in monthly income. The exact amounts vary from consulate to consulate. For example, at the Mexican consulate in Detroit, Michigan, where I applied for my temporary residency visa back in 2020, temporary visa applicants must show a minimum income of $2,513 for the past six months after taxes. That's a major increase from the $1,634 per month I had to show when I applied back in 2020. This page was only updated on February 4th. Prior to that, it still showed the old financial requirements, so no wonder there's been a lot of confusion about this change. Now, if you decide to go the savings investments route, then you've got to show $45,000 USD in those accounts for the last 12 months. Again, this can vary from consulate to consulate. In Detroit, you have to show your last 12 months of your bank statements with a minimum average balance of 41,780 USD per month. For permanent resident applicants, some consulates are asking to see between $4,300 and $4,500 in monthly income. And if you are going that savings investment route, you've got to show $180,000 USD in savings and investments over the past 12 months. If possible, and I think that this will likely be my standing advice for all time, if possible, I highly recommend trying to reach out to the consulate where you plan on applying to have an email correspondence with someone about that specific consulate's financial requirements for proving economic solvency. Whatever conversations you have, whatever exchanges take place, be sure to have a record of them. Print those emails out. Whatever financial documents they okayed, whatever amounts that they said that you had to show, bring proof of those conversations to your visa appointment and say, hey, I talked to so-and-so and this is what they told me. This is what I've got. Of course, not all consulates are communicative. Sometimes it's like talking to a brick wall, but you are likely to have the best luck emailing rather than trying to call. Most consulates do not answer their phones. With all the changes happening to the Mexico residency process, you deserve the chance to talk to someone who is communicating with consulates and immigration officials on a daily basis, which is why at 7 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday, February 15th, I am hosting a special virtual event via Zoom, a Mexico residency Q&A with Ivan Pavan from Host Relocation. Now, Avon is an immigration advisor with more than 15 years of experience helping foreigners navigate the Mexico residency process. 
she's gonna talk about the most common mistakes that foreigners make when applying for residency in Mexico. And after her presentation, you'll have a chance to ask her your own questions about getting residency in Mexico. This special virtual event is the first in an exclusive guest series for the Move to Mexico membership. Head to the link in the description for more information. Number two, permanent resident applicants must be retired. This isn't an entirely new change. I was hearing from subscribers back in 2021, back in 2020, that even though they met the financial requirements for permanent residency, they were being denied those visas, instead being told by the consulates to go for temporary residency because they weren't retired yet. So some consulates, I don't wanna go as far as to say all consulates. It's very hard to say all consulates about anything in the Mexico residency process, but some consulates do ask, do demand that permanent resident visa applicants are retired. Remember that every Mexico visa application is dealt with on a per case basis and your application both for your visa and for your residency card here in Mexico, those are at the discretion of the official that you are meeting with at the time. So sometimes it all comes down to the person who you are sitting across the desk from. Number three, most INM offices no longer accept walk-ins. The majority of INM offices across Mexico are no longer accepting walk-ins. That includes Queretaro. Now this is a big, big change because if you remember the videos that I did back when I applied for my residency, when I went to INM here in Queretaro to get my residency card, I had to wake up at the crack of dawn to wait in line. I think I got there at something like, I think I got there at 5.30 in the morning, waiting in line outside of INM to get in. That's just how things were done back then. INM has a new system in place now and you've got to make an appointment online ahead of time. And this new way is simpler. I put simpler in air quotes there because it gets a little complicated with timing. You have got to make an appointment. In some cases, in the case of Queretaro, you've got to make an appointment a month and a half out. They are really, really booked up over there. Since you only have 30 days upon entering Mexico with your residency visa to go to INM to start the second part of the the process and get your residency card a month and a half whoa yeah do the math on that one this means making your appointment at INM while you are still in your home country before you travel to Mexico the INM offices in Mexico that are still accepting walk-ins are very few and far between. So if you're thinking that you might go for that option, I recommend checking with the foreigner Facebook groups in that area. Usually those are a good source of on the ground information. Number four, new prices for residency cards. In 2022, a one year temporary residency card costs 4,739 pesos. A permanent residency card costs 5,776 pesos. If you're wondering about the process of paying for those temporary residency cards, the Pago de Derechos at a bank in Mexico, then check out this video. Number five, some INM offices don't require photographs tipo infantil. Depending on which INM office you go to in Mexico, they may or may not want those photographs tipo infantil. For example, if you go in Queretaro, they're gonna ask for one photo tipo infantil. They're gonna ask for a forward-facing photo and they're gonna use it for your curb. If you go in Mexico City though, bringing your own photos is not necessary. If you're unsure whether or not you need those photographs tipo infantil for the INM where you're going for your residency card, then personally, I recommend erring on the side of bringing them. Photography studios are plentiful in Mexico, so it's relatively easy and pretty cheap to get these photographs. Number six, adios info desk. In the past, at some INM offices, there was an information desk where you could go and ask your questions. Sometimes they'd hand out lists of documents that you needed, but those info desks are bye-bye. 
now because you have to have an appointment to go to even enter the INM building, you can't just show up and ask your questions. If you make a mistake on your application or you don't have all the documents you need on the day of your appointment, you're gonna have to make another appointment to come back and resubmit. So it's really, really important that you come prepared with everything that you need. If you're looking for a definitive list of documents, then check out the popular Mexico residency roadmap in the description below. It just got a whole new update for 2022, and it's helped hundreds of subscribers and readers get their Mexico residency. Number seven, faster turnaround time to get your residency card. If you've watched my Mexico residency series here on my channel, then you know what a, what a wild ride it was getting my residency card here in Querétaro. Despite turning all of my documents in in August of 2020, and they were all correct, mind you, despite turning all my documents in in August 2020, I did not have my residency card in my hot little hand until December 2020. With the new system in place, you only need to go to INM once. And in that appointment, you submit your documents, you get your photographs taken, you do your fingerprints, and you get your residency card back the same day. So for all these changes happening to the Mexico residency process, hey, at least that's a good one. If you have any questions about the Mexico residency changes I covered in this video, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And I really, really hope to see you at the virtual event on February 15th for the Mexico residency Q&A with our guest expert immigration advisor. I'm Alex from backpackingbrunette.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>